Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at our FSB National Webinar, webinar this morning on why your business needs a book. I'm Ruth Lambert, and I'm one of the development managers for the FSB, which means I look after an area of our members, and my area is Somerset and Wiltshire. And it's lovely to be with you today. Uh, we know we'll have people from across the UK, so you're all very welcome. Uh, the format of this webinar today will be, I'll be handing over shortly to our first speaker who's Karen Williams from Libertas who is a, um, a book coach and also an author herself. Um, she'll be delivering a, a short presentation about her experience of writing her own books and working with people to help them to write theirs and then we'll have our second um, speaker today who's Mary Lunnan from Dare to Blossom Coaching who's written six books and Mary and I will be having a bit of a conversation about her journey through to thinking about writing books to ending up being the author of six books so hopefully that will be interesting for you uh there's there's plenty of opportunities to ask questions today so um please note that the chat box won't be working uh but the q a box does so if you have any questions you'd like me to raise with either of our speakers today then uh please just type them in the q a box i'll keep track of them and then but at the end of the session i'll come to all your questions and we'll get mary and karen to address those at the end so that's the format of the session we won't finish any later than 11 o'clock um, and we are recording the session today so if I don't if you think oh I missed that or I wish I could go back and, and look at that again then you will be able to access the recording on our FSB on demand page what you do is you just google FSB on demand and the page will come up and you can see this recording once it's uploaded on there and all our latest webinars as well. So a whole range of different subjects that hopefully might be useful to you. To you. There is um, going to be a transcription service on, on this webinar. So if you'd like to do that, then um, please just um, enable that by going into the, the settings at the bottom and you can click that you'd like to add the transcription. If you aren't an FSB member yet, just to say we do loads of stuff to support small businesses and we'd love to have the opportunity to speak to you further about the benefits of joining the FSB family. So please do visit our website at fsb.org.uk if you'd like to know more about becoming a member. So without further ado, um, welcome Karen, welcome Mary. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to hand over to Karen, who is our sp first speaker. So thank you very much, Karen. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you for inviting me today. It's um, a delight to be here. Everything changed for me in my business on the 22nd of March 2011. Why, you might ask? Well, it's probably quite obvious because you're on this webinar today. It's the day I published my first book. Everything changed because it put me and my business on the map, it increased my visibility, credibility, my authority. I reached more people across the world and I could make a bigger difference. So I'm delighted to be here today for this event. And for the next 25 minutes or so, I'll be talking a little bit about my story, my journey, why you need to write a book, the business benefits of writing a book. And I'm going to be sharing some other people's stories with you as well. So a little bit more about me. Now, I never set out to become a book mentor. I've been doing this for the last 10 years now. But when I started out in business 17 years ago, I started out as a career coach. My background was in HR training. I knew what it was like to work with people who were going through career change. And I also went through it myself many times. And it was that that got me into coaching all those years ago. So that first book came about because I was doing NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, Master Practitioner Qualification. Now, when you do the NLP program, you have to do a modelling project, which means you get in front of a group of people who do what you want to do really well. For the first few years of my business, I was kind of trundling along, having a few successes, but I was juggling a full time job and also juggling working for myself and running my own business. I was starting to go part time, but I hadn't quite achieved the success I wanted to. So actually spending time with these successful coaches who were really great at their craft, but also had a very successful business was a life changer for me. So not only did the book change my life in terms of credibility, it changed my life because I learned what other people were doing really well, and I was able to implement that myself. Now, if writing that first book was really easy, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. And it was not easy. And I'll share it with you now. So this is the book, The Secrets of Successful Coaches. So that's the book that came out in March 2011. 
And there were three things that could have easily got in my way as I wrote that book. Firstly, overwhelm. When you've done 11 interviews, amazing interviews, that's hours of transcription. This is before AI could potentially help help me now if I was going through that again. Um, how do you turn that into a book that someone can read rather than just a melee of information that probably has a little bit of value, but doesn't actually make sense unless you pull it together into a really solid structure? I also went through imposter syndrome. Who am I to write a book? And those sorts of things that a lot of authors go through, like, um, you know, what if nobody likes it? What if it gets bad reviews? What if it bombs? But you never know until you do something, do you? And the third thing was the practical element of publishing. And I'm sure Mary will be touching on this later. There are so many different options when it comes to publishing a book. How do you find the right one for you? And then how do you launch it? How do you market it? And I learned the hard way with that first book. I didn't have someone like myself supporting me. Actually, there probably weren't people like myself back then. But a model through, and on the 22nd of March, 2011, I stood up in front of 70 people at my very first book launch. And my very first book was launched. So I said never again after that first book. So a year later, of course, I was writing book number two. And next week, I'm actually launching my 10th book and doing an updated edition of my fifth book, Marketing Made Simple. So if it comes a bit of an addiction, it comes a little bit of something that you enjoy doing. So now I am the best-selling author of 10 books, as I said, um, got launched next week. I'm a TEDx speaker. I did my first TED Talk six years ago. Um, I support business owners to write a book that really builds their business. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Whether you've got a story to tell, wisdom to share, expertise, experience, or people have told you you need to write a book. I don't know. There's also there's something magical that happens when you get your words out of your head and down onto paper. So I've supported hundreds of business owners over the last 10 years to plan their books, to write their books, to develop their books, to create a business off the back of their books, to publish, to launch, to market. And I'm going to be sharing some of those nuggets. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A and um, I'm sure we'll come to them later or, or contact me directly. More than happy to do so. Um, I run writing retreats in Spain. It's a, it's a hard life. Someone has to do it. Um, and that's what I do on a day to day basis. So let me jump into the content now. Why might you need to write a book for your business? Now, I might have given you a little bit of an insight and also maybe a bit of inspiration already. So I'm going to share with you five reasons why I think a book is really valuable to a business. Now, bear in mind, I work with a lot of service business owners. So I work with coaches, consultants, therapists, trainers, experts, people who are selling themselves and selling their own expertise and their own experience and also maybe their own story. So I'm going to share a few examples as I go through this. So the first reason why you might need to write a book is that you find yourself saying the same things again and again and again. And you, you've had up of repeating yourself and you know that you want to have a resource that you can recommend people to. Maybe the right resource isn't quite out there yet. And you also know that you've got a huge amount of expertise yourself that could help other people. So I want to introduce you to this lady, to Jenny Phillips. Now, when I was kind of making the tentative steps into the book mentoring arena, it was the beginning of, it was, it was around about 10 years ago. I attended a, an event called Speak Like a TED Talker um, in London, and I started to talk about the fact that I would love to help people to write their book. And Jenny came to me and said, I'd like to write a book. So a couple of months later, we found ourselves around her kitchen table, getting post-it notes out and mapping out her process and mapping out the structure for their book. And she was the first person I took through the whole process. So this is Jenny's book, Eat to Outsmart Cancer. And Jenny's experience is that she experienced breast cancer and she found that nutrition was the thing that supported her through the process. So she found herself attracting more clients who um, she trained as a nutritionist. She had more clients who were going through cancer who wanted her help. And she found herself saying the same things again and again and again. And that's why she wrote her book. So the second reason you might want to write a book is that people say, have you got a book? Because they're interested in your story or they're interested in what you have to say. So a really great example here is this chap, um, Steve Judge. It's disappearing into my background. So Steve um, had a car accident when he was in his 20s and he was told by the medical professionals that he might never walk again. And he decided to defy um, the prognosis, the diagnosis, and he, he really pushed through this and he became a paratriathlete world champion. 
Steve has got an incredibly powerful story and he was speaking a lot at events and people kept on coming up to him saying, have you got a book, Steve? And he said, I haven't got a book. You need a book. So he wrote his first book um, around about four or five years ago now. When you've got a book that links into your business, it is really powerful because I was talking to someone about this yesterday, actually. You know, the benefits of a book is that someone like Steve, who gets um, commissioned to do speaking engagements, he now can package up his book in that speaker fee. So it means that he can really build his business off the back of the book. So that's that's another reason. So if people keep saying, have you written a book? That's another reason to write one. So the third reason is that you want to spread your message far and wide. And I think that this is definitely going to go into my background. So this is Jana. So Jana is a coach and a trainer. She's based out in Zagreb in Croatia. When Jana came to me just before the pandemic, she said, I'm a coach and I'm a trainer in Croatia. I want to make a bigger difference across the world. And I got an email from her yesterday to say that she is speaking over the next few weeks in Romania, Madrid and the UK. Um, A couple of months ago, she did a tour. Within three weeks, she was speaking in Asia and Australia. She decided to write her book in English, which is her second language, and she does speak an amazing English. But actually, that's a real feat to really step into her own boldness to write the book. So if you want to spread your message, you want to reach more people across the globe, maybe you want to work globally, write a book. The fourth thing is that you've got valuable stories, valuable wisdom that will benefit other people. Now, my most recent client to publish is this lady, um, Helen Rowe. Um, Helen published her book. uh, Literally, I went to London two weeks ago for her book launch. She was really angry about poverty in Britain. She was angry that the political parties didn't seem to do anything about it, that they kind of just, um, I don't know, they just did a little bit. They kind of said, yeah, of course, we're doing this. But they didn't have a strategy. They didn't have a process to follow so that she saw people sleeping on the streets and she saw people who were really struggling with um, with poverty. And she said, I could either be angry or I could do something about it. And that was the motivation for her to write her book. Um, she actually won the Page Turn Awards a couple of years ago, and I supported her as a, one of the prizes that she won was um, a mentoring programme with me. And I'm delighted that we worked together to get her book picked up by a publishing company. So if you've got a powerful message, lessons, story, experience to share, that's another great time to write a book. And then the fifth thing, you want to leverage your time and you want to leverage your expertise and help more people. So this is another recent book that's just been published. This is by um, Yvonne, um, who published her book um, a couple of months ago, um, People in her in Their element, element. And she works with organisations around relationships and communication. Now, Yvonne has got a young child who requires a lot of support. So when Yvonne came to work with me, she was only working school hours. And she really wanted to be able to maximise those hours. And one of the reasons why she wrote the book was to enable to her to have something that accompanies her training courses, but also enables her to reach more people with her message um, and her expertise. So I'd love to know which of those resonate with you. So do you find yourself saying the same things again and again and again? Do you, people keep asking you if you've written one? Do you want to spread your message to more people? If you've got maybe an itch, you you know, something that really niggles you that you want to write about or expertise to share, or do you want to leverage your time and expertise? If they do resonate with you, I'd love to know which ones, um, because it can be more than one as well. So you might be realising, yeah, okay, I need to write a book. You know, some of those hit the mark with me. So what are the business benefits of writing a book? So I'm going to share some of those with you now. Certainly Yvonne, when she came to work with me, she was delivering workshops for organisations. And through working together to really develop her process and what she actually really did when she worked with those organisations, she realised that there's so much more that she could offer to people who needed her help. So she looked at her process and she realised that there was a bigger package she could put together, which benefited her in terms of her own business income, but also benefited the outcomes that an organisation would get from working with her. So one of the unexpected benefits of writing a book is you get that real clarity in your message, that real clarity in your focus and what you want to get known for. So valuing yourself, being able to get your message out to more people has has so many benefits. Um, 
it allows you to get more clients referrals and, and recommendations as well because if you think about it if people read your message your story in a book they get to know what you do how you do it who you do it for and they can say ah such and such is the go-to person for this because they get to know that because when you've got a really solid clear message there's something about a book that really allows you you know a website and a blog is great podcast is great but when you're distilling it into 50,000 words that goes out into into the unknown really into the into the world you can make that bigger difference you can really say what you want to say in more words um, but obviously being quite concise in, in the process so another great person I'm going to mention, um, this is this is Nick. He did my um, Smart Author program a couple of years ago. Um, he, he came to me at the beginning of the pandemic. The pandemic for me was a really a time when a lot of people started writing their books. I created an online program as a response to that. Um, and he finds that he gets so many more opportunities off the back of it. And I mentioned earlier about um, packaging up a book within within speaking opportunities and Nick has really nailed that and got some really great publicity off the back of the book as well. Other business benefits is you stand out from other people, you stand out from your competitors because if there are a lot of people doing things like you, you know certainly in my world there's a lot of book coaches and mentors that have come out over the last few years. Um, when I started doing it there were very few people doing what I did, now there are quite a lot more. So when when you do write a book you do stand out. And even if your competitors have written the book, you can find your unique hook or your unique angle that allows you to stand out. I think another powerful thing I want to share with you is leaving a legacy. Um, I was working with a guy, um, I don't have his book here, Paul Harper, a couple of years ago. Um, he wrote a book called Reinventing the Finance Profession. Now, Paul is I'm sure you won't mind me saying this. He's an older gentleman. He runs a recruitment company and within the finance industry and he has decades of experience in the finance industry but he didn't there wasn't a book out there that really charted what happened from how it was unregulated where he used to have if you remember the man from the Pru come round and everything that's changed in terms of the regulation the impact of the regulation and actually he brought in so many stories from other people who had gone through that um, and it became a really powerful book and it was finalist in the business book awards um, earlier this year as well so leaving a legacy, I know that was one of Paul's motivations for writing that book. And lastly, it can be cathartic, especially if you're writing a book about your own personal experience. Now, many of my clients are writing kind of more how-to books or self-help books, but some are writing about their own story. I've written one of my books is about my own journey as well. Um, but if you're writing a book that's really linked into your own personal story, your own personal journey, you get to relive it. And that has a, it's a double-edged sword, really. You know, you can really come to terms with anything that you've gone through, but you can also look at how um, you can use your story, your experiences as, as a force for good, as long as you tell your story from a healed scar, not an open wound. When you've come to terms with it and you can share it and you can inspire more people. I do find that a lot of clients write the book that they wish they had had when they were going through a difficult situation. So if you've got experience, knowledge, expertise that you think needs to help other people who maybe are going through something you're struggling with, that's when it's time to write a book. So I'm just going to wrap up over the next five minutes by just giving you some real practical steps. If you're thinking, yeah, I know I need to write a book. I can see the business benefits, but where on earth do I get started? I'm just going to give you three practical tips to get started. Um, you can, of course, there's a workbook just to, just over my shoulder. Um, please feel free. It's a complimentary workshop, a workbook available on my website. It gives you 21 questions to think about in terms of getting started. But here are three other things you can do to get started. First of all, get really clear on your why. Why are you writing this book? What is your motivation? What's going to keep you going when you wake up at four o'clock in the morning with that really good idea and you have the decision, do I go back to sleep or do I get it up, get up and write it down? It's the motivation that's going to keep you writing when you or even when you get to the edits of a book and you're going, OK, I need to keep going to get get it out there and get my book out and really make a bigger difference in the world. But your why is also about your vision. What do you what good in the world do you want to create with the book? What's your goal? How does your book relate to your business and your business goal? And ultimately, I'm looking for, you know, when you're creating a book, your book isn't here and your business here. When they go hand in hand, that's where the magic happened. 
happens where you can really leverage your book through your business, which might lead into programs, opportunities of working with you, speaking, podcast opportunities, uh, maybe TV publicity opportunities. So when everything that you do in your business and your book are interlinked, that's when the magic happens. So be really clear on your why. Why are you writing it? What's your motivation? What's your vision for it? What will it give you that you don't have already? And what is your goal? So that's the first thing. The second thing is the who. Who is your book for? Now, there's a common misconception that the broader your audience, the more people you can actually reach with your message. And the opposite is true when it comes to a book, especially a book to build your business. The clearer you are on your niche audience and your ideal reader, and ultimately they're your ideal client as well, um, as, as I've just mentioned. When you're really clear on who is the most perfect client to write your book, it becomes so much easier. I'm going to give you an example here. Um, I've been working with um, another Paul, um, Paul Flint, who is publishing his book later this year. He's in the final kind of editing publishing stages at the moment. Now, his book is for youngsters who struggle with ADHD, Asperger's, and they struggle to achieve their exams. And his book takes them through various strategies to accelerate their learning and help them to revise more effectively. Now, he had a choice when he wrote this book. He could have written it for the kids. He could have written it for the parents. He could have written it for the teachers. If he was trying to, excuse me a second. <coughs> if he was trying to write it for all of those different audiences, he couldn't really, because if you think, you know, the way a child or a youngster, I say a young person um, is spoken to, is very different to a teacher or, or a parent. So he chose to write it, write it directly for the kids. And that means he can get down with the kids and that he can use their language and he can he can he's a bit of a big kid himself. So think about who your book is for before you start it. When you know who your book is for and you might have a secondary audience and, you know, the parents obviously is going to probably buy it for the kid. But when you know exactly who it's for, you can really identify what problem are you solving with the book? What new information is your ideal reader looking for? So the problem Paul's solving with his book is that, you know, the kids really want to succeed at school, but, you know, something's stopping them or they, they don't get taught how to pass exams or how to learn and revise effectively. And once you know the problem, you can look at the solution. So the solution is, you know, hints and tips to pass exams, to um, make the most of your revision time, all of that lovely stuff. And then you can actually look at how you can structure the book to help them to go from the problem they're facing to each of the solution that they're looking for. So the kind of the big promise that they'll get from reading your book. So that's the why, the who. And the third thing is the what. What is going in your book? You do not have to put everything you know in this book. And you may, like Mary, like me, you might write more than one book. And that might feel a little bit scary to begin with. But actually, I think it's really powerful to know that you don't need to put everything in one book. So what is your topic? What is your unique hook, your unique angle? And how are you going to take your readers on a journey through the book? So it makes sense that it engages them and makes them want more from you. So do you want to write a book? Is it on your agenda? And if so, when are you going to do it? <laughs> now, I accidentally wrote my first book, but... For me, it's just been a powerhouse and it's been an amazing experience to actually have the opportunity to share my message out with more people. Um, and I know that we all have so much wisdom to share and so much experience. I think we're in a world now where things have become more difficult, things have become more challenging. And actually, why don't we use our own experiences and our knowledge as a force for good? So that's it for me. Um, I've got a book coming out next week. I'm just going to give it a really quick plug. Um, I'll hand you over to Ruth to talk to Mary and then happy to answer any questions later on. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. That was really inspiring. And um, and I love the way that you laid that out very, very simply so that there's lots of, you know, lots of very different reasons for writing a book. But you've got to be really clear about them to start with. And, you know, it's it's clearly not a short undertaking to write a book. It takes a lot of time and commitment. So, you know, you've got to be really clear about why you're doing it and how it's going to benefit you and be, be worth the time. So, yeah, no, thank you so much for that. If anyone has any questions for Karen, please do put them in the Q&A. A box down the bottom and I can um, ask her a 
about those in a second. So Mary, I'm going to invite you to put your camera on now as well. Lovely. And then we can hopefully be spotlighted together. Lovely. Thank you very much, Layla. Um, so Mary, you um, are an author as well. I think um, Layla is going to put up a little sc uh, screen of the books that you've written. Lovely. So you've got you've got six books. Why don't we kick off by uh, would you would you introduce yourself to people and maybe talk about you know how you came to write the first book that you that you wrote? Yes, of course, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, gosh, I've been nodding all the way through Karen's talk just now because it so much echoes my experience. So um, about me, I live in North Cornwall, out in the countryside. And when I discovered life coaching, it changed my life. And I became passionate about that and retrained as a coach. And I soon realized it was really important to get out to a wide audience around the world, as it turns out now, with the technology we have, which is just wonderful. And one of the ways to do that is about writing books. Um, but the first reason I wrote my very first book was nothing to do with that. And it's a bit like Karen said, there's a day when my life changed. And for me, that was 12th of May, 1994, when I was given a diagnosis of cervical cancer. And my first response was to want to know more and to speak to other people who'd been through this experience. And there was very little available at the, the time. So um, what I did over a few years was draw together people's stories. And again, much like Karen, I collected all these stories. I, I've just checked and counted them up through the book while you were speaking, Karen. There are 19 stories in my book, including my own. So the challenge of editing that together and getting that into a book format was a, a huge challenge. So um, I think you could take the slide down now, Layla, if you like, so we can have a conversation. Thank you. I'm sure we can show the people that again at the end, but I'd, I'd rather be chatting with you, Ruth, than uh, Thank you. And seeing too many of those. So, so briefly, that was how, how I came to write the first book. It was a passion to help other people and to not feel alone myself. I didn't sort of realise how much support this process would give to me whilst I was doing it. And that's a huge benefit from that was being able to do that and um, talk to other people as, as my very first response was. So um, I can see that that would be a really sort of useful process for your for you to go through actually as well as providing a good resource for other for others to refer to but but to be honest if I was thinking about writing a book um, which this webinar is making me think about and I wouldn't I wouldn't even know where to start so so I, I mean Aside from um, sitting down and writing it, you know, and knowing how to do that, how to sort of get it out there in 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 the world. So, um, so sort of to start with, how did you how did you come up with how you were going to structure the book? How did you manage your time to be able to do that? I mean, clearly you weren't that well alongside it as well, so that must have been an additional challenge. But um, how how did you go about organising yourself so that you could actually produce this book in the first place? Mm, a very good question. I mean, again, this applies. To to, to all the books I've written really honestly I learned along the way <laughs> through the years and you know in those days it sounds like the dark ages it's not that long ago there wasn't the technology to do everything online that we have now and so I went about it the old-fashioned way of contacting publishers and receiving uh, rejection letters and, and I've mostly written the book before I did that but, but then I was lucky enough to get a um, contact with a local publisher here in Cornwall who helped me with the the editing and the structuring um, I think I had a pretty clear idea to start with though it changed because it evolved and changed as I received all these stories that became a lot more about those rather than more practical information in a way um, and the interesting thing there's another book that came out of that quite a few years later which I just briefly so this is the, the first one for those who missed the slide this was the very first book flying in the face of fear which is a phrase that one of my interviewees um, used that's what it felt like and then later on I was commissioned to write um, this book or well, the first version of this book the essential guide to cervical cancer by a small publisher called Need to Know Books. And they wrote books about topics, or they published books about topics that they thought people needed to know. Um, and that was a really interesting experience because that was quite different because they had a template they wanted the book to fit into. And, and I was able to add in some of my personal experience. And it was working directly with the publisher for the second time, but in quite a different way to my first experience. So that was a really interesting way of um, 
of exploring that. So I'm not sure if I've answered your question about how I structured it, but there's two different ways there that <laughs> I've done it over the years for that particular topic, which is where I started with this publishing. Well, and it's very interesting to, to hear that, you know, from writing the first book, you then got asked to write a second book. You know, it's sort of, it, you're, you established yourself as an expert and, and a credible writer so that people were then offering new opportunities to do other things, which I guess relates back to some of what Karen was talking about, you know, a book potentially being a springboard for doing talks and doing, um, you know, doing podcasts and, and all sorts of things because you are that sort of established expert because you've got the book book to prove it. How, how in a practical way did you make the time in your life to, to write the book? I mean, are you a write it first thing in the morning person? How did you fit it in around found your other work well right from the beginning the very first book um grew out of um a journal i began on the day i was diagnosed i just knew i had to keep a record of what was happening firstly just for myself i had no idea about writing a book then um so that was really the impulse was to write things down and you know sometimes that was just the practical stuff that happens when you're going through that sort of roller coaster of a horrible experience um but the other part of it was uh, my own reflections and things I didn't necessarily want to share with anybody else around me I just wanted to get it down so that was you know that again actually at the time I was going through treatment I had the time later on it became a regular um, practice it turned into a habit which I was able to do regularly and I don't do it quite so much now I've been noticing over recent years because I do much more online now and you know go on to my different Facebook groups and LinkedIn and all different things and interact there and write there it's slightly different but um, I still do that in a different way and the other way of getting a book done is just to steal the time from everyday life to be honest <laughs> um, I know some writers are very very disciplined will sit down and write for three hours before breakfast or whatever it is I tended to just do it when I could um, and you know and deadlines are wonderful things they really focus the mind and then you you really crack on with it and um, sometimes that's a good way to work sometimes it's better to be a bit more methodical about it I think and plan it so, but everybody's different of course how they go about these things I think that's a good thing. I love the idea of the journal, because I guess if some of us are thinking, well, you know, I'd like to write a book, but I'm not quite sure what I'd include in it. Just starting journaling about about your work, about your day might then give you the material to look back and think, oh, well, that would be an interesting chapter. That would be good. That's the theme that's coming up quite often in my, you know, in my work. So it sort of might help sort of springboard into what should be the appropriate content. And I guess the finding the time to do it comes down to your why doesn't it so if you're really motivated to do it you're going to find that time to fit into your 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 busy life I suppose to do it you mentioned the fact that technology had come on since you 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 wrote your first book could you maybe talk us through the different means of publishing that you've used the different the different routes that people might might think about yes yes well my first coaching book um was published in um 2008 and I partly that grew out of a, a newsletter and blog that I started in 2007. So that was another way of getting that practice in that writing is to is blogging and, and newsletters. And again, people have the, the sort of ebb and flow of what people like to use for their businesses changes, doesn't it? I think a lot more people actually are going back to um, that form of writing because they like to be able to write a bit more than the you know the quick snappy things that disappear instantly on social media. Um, so. Um, when again again it's quite a while ago um, I used my first online publishing that was self-published my first self-published book and it was Dare to Blossom Coaching and Creativity which is this one with the green cover um, and that was that was um, published using something called lulu.com which is before Amazon started doing online publishing believe it or not <laughs> and actually I still use them because I'm familiar with their process I really in some ways that'd probably be a benefit to me if I switched over to doing it fully on on Amazon yet so I I quite like their process and it's easy to use and it still goes through Amazon it's just a, unfortunately another few pennies you lose along the way in, in fees and things um, but that's you know so that's the first self-publishing and that I really enjoyed in a way because I'd learned a bit about how to um, structure books by then um, and I also I was working with my own store working with the same life coach who I work with right from about 
1999 2000 who introduced me to coaching and he really helped me of getting an idea of the, the structure so when I got stuck we had some dedicated coaching sessions about structuring books he was also a writer which I don't think I even know, knew when I first started working with him so again that was getting that support getting support from somebody else and being able to uh, go go into that with self-publishing with some background to it from uh, somebody who'd done it before me basically so how, um, I mean, what do you think you've learned along the way about the best way to to sort of write a book? Are there any tips that you would pass on to people? Um, well, the first thing is to start and just keep going. <laughs> because, and, you know, once you've got away from that blank screen or the blank page, at least you've got something. So it almost doesn't matter what you write at the beginning. As long as you get something down. So journaling, as we said, is a really good way to do that and blogging and newsletters. Um, and then at some point is to step back and make sense of it. And again, as Karen said, you know, having done all these interviews or having all this material that you may have produced, how do you make that into a book? Um, and then, you know, finding best ways to publish it. I mean, I've done my latest book. I did. I started off assuming I'd self-publish it. And then I started looking for publishers and eventually I found a publisher. And this one took quite a long time to get out because it changed form so much <laughs> along the way over several years. Um, but it was something about just keeping going regardless and then almost working out the best way to do it, which maybe isn't as planned as um, as could have been best done. Again, it's, it's in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So with, with somebody like Karen's help, I'm sure you'd have a structure in place right from the beginning. I've done some work with Karen in the past, some years ago now. Well, that's very clear because she's got that very clear vision and all that experience. She can really help you keep going with it. In terms of a bit business book specifically, I think that's a really good technique to use and to get that support right from the beginning rather than sort of stumbling around in the dark as I have done over the years to find my own way. <laughs> How well uh, you mentioned finding a publisher, like the right publisher for your book. Do you have any any tips on how you went about that? I mean, how did how did you work out what who were the best publishers to approach? First of all, it's research, an awful lot of book writing. And one of the main things I've learned is to, is to keep doing your research. So you need is researching into publishers specifically, but also into to readers and who, you know, who your ideal reader and client is and, and what else is out there, you know, the competition and that can seem a really difficult, you know, endless task, but I think it's just a way of spending some time with it. It's like any research, you know, you can get led off into the far reaches of the internet, but be, be programmed about it to consult reputable sources. Um, but also there's a lot of serendipity and luck in it. And I was introduced to this particular publisher by a friend of mine in America who'd been accepted um, by them. And it turns out they publish, um, sort of mind body spirit group books i suppose they'd loosely term it from the categories they place themselves in and um, it turned out to be a, a pretty good fit for what my final most latest book is not my final book my latest book is about so it's exploring opportunities and you know you can't just rely on luck but sometimes you make your own luck by being in the right place at the right time and just asking the question well, I guess, yeah, you, it's, it's it's a good point, really, isn't it, to to think about who you know who may have written a book before and, and ask them for their their tips and, and their contacts as well, if there's anyone that they would they would recommend that you, you speak to. Did, were you given any good advice along the way in, in the process of writing your books? Is there anything that you anyone that you did speak to that that you thought, oh, yeah, you know, I hadn't thought of that. And that's really helpful. Um, well, there's lots of people I've spoken to over the years but I said one of the people again I worked with for the, for the most recent book which I haven't, I haven't waved at you haven't waved at people okay. yet so Compass Rose speaks it doesn't show up very well on the screen anyway um, and before that I was writing a memoir which I thought would be part of that and that eventually well it, not eventually firstly became a separate little book which I also self-published for the powerful voice of the quiet ones um, but the person I've spoken to most recently specific on this subject and who wrote the foreword for my recent book is Nick Williams who's a he's a coach does um works with all sorts of different people but he's particularly looking at inspiration and creativity and how you how you spark that inspiration how you find it when you need it and um again for the the Compass Rose Speaks book I, I had a really powerful session with him where I found the structure for that book and he really helped me with that 
But the, the most broad ranging advice I've had really is to take all the advice, ask all the experts, get people to read your book, which is a scary thing <laughs> to be feedback readers. And you don't have to take that advice. It's your book. You don't have to adapt yourself and change yourself to all these different opinions. So even when I was choosing the cover design for my last book and the, um, the photograph that I used of myself and that sort of thing, I did ask my community online and then I got so many different opinions. That sometimes I rather wished I hadn't <laughs> but, and they were very useful and I rejected some of them and followed some of them in part. And it was my choice at the very end of it all. So I think there's something about you are the expert on the, what you're writing about because you're the author. So, you know, take the advice, it's very wise, and stick to, stick to your um, instinct for what is right for you and for your readers. No, that's really good advice, isn't it? And it links back into what Karen was saying about being really clear on, on what you're trying to achieve with the book and, then, and, you know, having that clear vision yourself of what it is you're trying to create. And then you will know, you know, obviously do take other people's thoughts into account, but you will know what feels right with, with the product that you're trying to achieve. So we were mentioning the fact that writing a book has a um, has a positive impact on your on your business, hopefully. Um, how, how has being being an author had a benefit to your coaching business? Well, it's it is about it's about the credibility. It brings people to you who might not want to, you know, step up and make a phone call or a contact email or anything. I just feel it's not for them, but it gets out to a much wider audience. So I know that I've been invited to to give talks and attend events, and and some people have come to me for coaching. And one person who came recently for one-to-one -one coaching had she'd read my newsletter for years she'd bought um, my first coaching book and um, she bought the little cards that I produced as well and finally she came forward for some coaching this is that slow um, introduction that people want to get to know you you know particularly of a any business service is almost it's almost like coaching anyway anybody who's offering a service they're working with a person you've got to um make sure you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you so one of the benefits is in a, in a book where there's a bit more scope as, as Karen said you know you don't want to make it too long and involve and there is scope for them to feel they're getting to know you a little bit you know when they've got particularly I mean I love physical books but you know even if it's an ebook they feel that they're connecting directly with the, the writer you know we, we often feel that don't we that we know the person that's writing because we've had their book with us we spent a long time reading their words it feels much more as if they're they're a friend that you can approach then yeah. so I think that's one of the big benefits of, of that yeah no definitely I can I can see that so so just finally then um what are you planning next do you have another book in the pipeline <laughs> good question um yes I, well, I haven't had a book in the pipeline yet I've got an idea in the pipeline I and mean, as I said this, this latest one your compass rose speaks has had a very long evolution from about 2018 I was quite horrified to realize that it was published in February this year and it's changed such a lot in, in that time and that was specifically really about the programs I've been running and how to make that into a book format which is quite a, a challenge um, but some so one of my um, reviewers of my my other one the memoir that I've mentioned he said he's in America he's been in contact with me for years and he read it and he sent me a very very sensitive and um, balanced review so it wasn't all positive but it was balanced but he also said privately you know there's a lot more that you could write about your experience and share about your experience in quite a different way to this memoir which is a bit more about family history and, and all those things so there's a little inkling of that and there's also a, a word that keeps popping up or a theme which is about connections and you know the whole of you know, when you look back from a bit later in life as where I am now mm. So much has just come through connections, which often seem like chance and and aren't really, perhaps, but all the different connections, you know, and to give the, the FSB a plug, you know, I've made some amazing contacts and friends through um, the FSB, both prior to the pandemic and more particularly since then, when we've been enjoying the joys of online networking. But it's led me to some amazing conversations with people I've met through your events and others, of your colleagues through, that I've really enjoyed. And there's something there about the power of that. There's a sort of human, human power of connection, which is facilitated by technology but it isn't um that isn't all there is to it so it's really valuable i feel 
Oh, no, thank you, Mary. And um, and it's very exciting to hear what you've got in the pipeline. And from hearing from both you and Karen, it sounds a bit like it's maybe a little bit addictive once you start writing books. You sort of think, oh, I could write one about this. I could do this about this. So it just once you get in that mindset and have done the first one, it's it's maybe a bit easy to do, easier to do. Um, Karen, I'd like to bring you back into the conversation now as well. Do you think it's a bit of an addiction, writing books? <laughs> I, I don't know about an indi- addiction, but I think you suddenly realise when you get feed, like Mary said, when you get feedback on, you know, what people have enjoyed about it, you realise you've got more to say or they ask you more questions. So and it does become easier. And I don't think the first one has to be too difficult, you know, and I think when you've got a process to follow, it makes it easier. Um, but yeah, maybe I, I do have clients come to me and say, I'm only writing one book. And then they come back to me a year or so later going, I'm ready. For, I'm working with a couple of clients who are working with me on their second. And some of my clients have done second books without me as well. So there is something that happens when you write one book and you go, actually, I've got more to say. Or also your business can evolve, which I guess, you know, Mary and I, we've both been around for a while. So, you know, my business back when I started, it, it doesn't look anything like my business now. So obviously I've had to update my message accordingly. Um, I'm just launching a second edition of a book that came out six years ago because things have changed over the last six years with the pandemic, with publishing options, with technology, resources available to us that sometimes we have to update books we've already published as well. Yeah, no, no, that's a really good point. And and obviously it doesn't have to be a fresh book each time. You're just keeping it, keeping it current for people. So we've had a couple of questions come through that I'm going to post you now. So um, the first one was, how do you choose who you want to help you to publish your book? So like, how do you, we've obviously, Karen, you're a, you're a, you know, a mentor and a coach for, for writing, but if, um, and, and, Obviously, we think you're great. That's why we've involved you. But just more generally, how can you judge if someone is going to be the right person to help you? Um, So how would you suggest people go about selecting? Because you mentioned that there were quite a lot of book coaches now, uh, um, people people starting to do that. And Mary, uh, so maybe Karen first and then Mary, maybe how do you, you know, what are your thoughts on how you, how you would decide who was the best person to, to work with for yourself? So so Karen, how would you kick that off? How do you, how do you judge a good person to help you publish your book so maybe it's a coach and a publisher so how do you how do you work out who's the best people to partner with you it's about having a conversation and just seeing if there's a good fit I think to a certain extent um I saw Ali's question in the chat and I think it's an interesting one and it could be taken in a million of one different <laughs> directions um I always have a pre-consultation with people if they're interested in getting my support we've got to make sure that there's a good fit between us um I don't do the publishing myself but I've got a team who can help people to self-publish that I work really closely with who I recommend they work on my books and I've also got a really good relationship to this latest client who got a publishing deal I've started to develop a really great relationship with the editor there and with the um yeah with the editor there so it's you know there are so many different options but in terms of publishing the book is I don't know maybe maybe that's maybe a second part of the question publishing the book is different because you've got to make sure in terms of choosing the right way of getting published you know whether you want to retain your intellectual property how much control you want over your book so I think the publishing route you choose is going to be very different depending on the person but certainly from choosing a book coach you know have a conversation you know do you like the person's style people choose me because I'm really structured so for people who find it hard to find structure or they've got so many ideas they're a creator like I am I find it really easy to pin them down and keep them focused and keep them going I don't know if that answered the question because I said I could have gone in a million one directions, so I probably went in three directions. <laughs> no, I mean I think it's all about someone that you're comfortable uh, working with. I guess Mary, Mary, would you agree with that, or have anything to add? Yes, I, yes, I would absolutely. And it is first of all being comfortable with the person. Exactly. I mean, I've I've coached people who've been writing books, not in the way that Karen does at all, not about the structure and the process, but more about helping them be clear on why they're doing it and finding the time. A lot of the, a lot of my coaching is about time management for people who want to achieve more in their lives and can't create more time. There's none of us can really. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really about finding the right person and making that choice for yourself again, just stepping back a little bit and making sure it feels right for you, I think. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good point. Um, so is it better to have your sort of written outline of your book ready before you talk to editors and publishers, um, or maybe even to have the whole book written before you talk to, to editors and publishers, or is it better to go in with a concept and then write it under their guidance afterwards? What's what's your experience of that? Um, let's start with Karen. 
Um, so one of the things I help people to do is to really get clear on their message behind the book. So if they are pitching to publishers, so Helen, that I mentioned, who's uh, this lady, whose book was, um, she's a great example. So her book launch was a couple of weeks ago. When she started working with me, we really looked at how she was going to pitch to a publisher in terms of, so she had all, she came to me, she'd already written it, but it was, wasn't really written in a way that was ready to go to a publisher you don't want to write the whole thing before you go to a publisher because they might have their own thoughts their own ideas but you certainly need to have a really clear synopsis as a whole there's kind of a, a document that I would suggest people complete I've got a template that I use with my clients which is kind of you you want that really hooky summary that kind of that thing that's going to grab their attention you need to show your authority you need to have a social media following email following so you need to show that you you're already doing something so don't expect a publisher to market the book for you you'll be doing a lot of the marketing yourself as well so there's there's certain things that you need to know and even if you're self-publishing you need to have this nailed right at the very beginning because if someone's saying you know Ruth you're writing a book and what are you writing about you need to be able to give that elevator pitch with real assurity within you know 30 seconds so they go oh I get what you're writing about um you know if someone waffles on and say well I'm sort of writing a book about this which is blah 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 you know you you've got to have that nail to begin with so you need to have a framework and a lot of publishers will ask for a few chapters as well because obviously they need to know that you can write that you can um you know you've got a good style and they may decide to mold you with Helen's her book was pretty much written by the time she went to the publisher um but you know, it did evolve and it did change a little bit after they got on board. Thank you. So, Mary, what about you? What's your experience been of this? Hmm, I, I agree. I think you know, researching publishers when I was approaching them direct, you know, they do they want a good synopsis and an idea of your audience and all those things. And, and they also want um, maybe a sample chapter or two. They don't necessarily want or even expect the full book to be written. And sometimes they don't want that. And they're often very, very clear. And it's, it's again, that's one of the big research jobs, really, if you're submitting to publishers, is looking at what their specific requirements are, which there's a lot in common, but often they're very specific and very different. And the timescales are different. The sort of work they're looking for is different. Um, but for example, I've, I love books that are published by a small company called Women Craft Publishing, who are based in Ireland. And the owner and chief chief editor of that company did a webinar recently about how to submit to her publishing company and what she expects. And it was really, really helpful. And I did submit for my last book and it was rejected. And she sent me a really useful rejection letter, which is great. Um, but I wasn't, I'm not intending to submit to her again, but I just found it really interesting hearing what she had to say and how very specific she was about it, and how very clear, which is very helpful, I'm sure, to people who were intending to submit a manuscript to her. Mm. Yes, no, that's it. That's a really, that's a really good idea. But it's it's a bit challenging that different people want different things, isn't it? I guess it's trying to um, have that very clear vision, which which you were saying at the beginning, Karen, and then suss out which publishers and try and find, try and look at what they're what they're asking for and and tailor your approach to that. May, may I share my own experience with writing yeah. my first book? Now, you know, the, this was um, back in two thousand and nine when I started the process of my first book. And I didn't have a clue how to how to get published. So I, I went through what Mary's obviously done in terms of, you know, uh, sussing out the publisher, the artists and the writers and artists yearbook, big red book. Yeah. Um, updated every year. It's a really good place to start. And um, so I did start approaching publishers, but I decided to go down the partnership route, which is kind of, so you kind of got self-publishing partnership, traditional publishing. Partnership is where you pay for the privilege of being published, but they work in partnership with you um, on a much stronger level there was marketing included in that as well um so it's really thinking and I did get the option of getting a traditional publishing deal for that first book I chose not to because I wanted more control more direction I wanted to retain my intellectual property I wanted to be able to use it for programs and things like that so it's really being clear on that side of things I know I've alluded to that already but I think when you're writing a book don't always a publishing deal may not always be the best option, especially if you're writing a business building book, because if you want to create programs, courses, you might have to get permission to your, to use your own intellectual property. So it's just something to be mindful of. Um, and the other thing, don't get too hung up about publishing it if you haven't written it yet, because at the end of the day, you need to have the idea. You need to be able to really hone that idea. If you're if you're hung up on how am I going to get it published, you may not ever get that idea out of your head and down onto paper. Um, so, so get get really clear on what you're writing. The more time you put in, in the structure, in my view, is important. The more time you really sort of do the research, interview people, all of that stuff, the easier it would be to write it and then the easier it would be to publish it as well. 
Thank you. No, that's that makes a lot of sense. So as we draw this session to a close today, then I'm going to ask you both. So what what's the 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 one thing you'd like people to take away from this session? What what do you think is the most important thing that they think about if they're thinking, should I should I give it a go and write a book? So uh, Mary, let's start with you first. What would your what would your 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 one bit of a, advice be for people? I'd say just do it. If that's what's calling to you, just go ahead and do it and then decide how it's all going to work afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I like it. Thank you. And what about you, Karen? Oh, I would agree. Um, if it's something you really want to do, it's become easier than ever to get your message out there in a book. Just do it, but make sure you have the right team behind you because I think the biggest thing that frustrates me is when I see people do it and they do it, they do it badly. And we know when you're spending a lot of time and I say a lot of time you know four hours a week is all you need to write a book in six months you know it's not a huge amount of time and you know you can as Mary said earlier you can nick it and you can steal it from Netflix or you know watching binge watching a series or a film or something like that or even washing up or doing doing the ironing and um, all sorts of ways of nicking the time um but yeah so really focus it on it I've gone off at a tangent somewhere now but just do it if you're passionate about it do it um and get your message out there you know you can make a bigger difference in the world don't, don't stop that's a lovely message to think to finish on thank you and i think anything that allows me to um to stop to do less washing up and ironing sounds like a good thing so i definitely <laughs> need to write a book but thank you both for your time and for sharing the benefit of your your experience and your your expertise really do um appreciate it uh we've we've just popped the contact details for both of you on the screen and i know both of you are very keen to connect with the people that are listening in the web into the webinar today so please do connect with karen and, and mary and continue the conversation um i'd like to thank you all for attending the webinar today it's very um we're very grateful for your time just a reminder that it will be on um on our on demand page um so that you will be able to watch it back again and um, if you've enjoyed it please do recommend it to others who will again be able to watch it on the on demand page as well and um just finally uh we're at fsb we try and support uh the small business community and we do lots of free stuff like this to help to help small businesses so if you find it on of use um of value we'd really um welcome a, a positive review on trust pilot um it just helps introduce other people to the sorts of things that we do who've maybe never heard of fsb before so if you have the time to do that we'd be very grateful but i'm gonna let everybody go now and just say thank you so much to um karen and mary again so i um, hope you all have a really great day thank you